Hey there Paper Geeks and Glitter Nerds, it's Zeno the Crazy Geek Crafter and this is the first part in a longer series that will not be uh, airing today only the first part will air today it is about making tiny houses to fit with the uh, extras of this uh, die set from MFT it's called Home Sweet Home and I have a thing for tiny houses um, here are some of the ones I've made previously um, it's an old project I'm trying to finish where I want to make a Christmas village but I wanted a, l a lot of shops for it and I didn't have much luck doing that by hand but now that I have my scanning card I think it's gonna go by much easier and these are some of the old ones I have they're a bit warped I think I used too thin cardstock but some of the houses actually still work so that's great the problem I have with these houses is that I used the dies to cut out the holes for the doors and uh, the windows which means that light is seeping out around the window frame and the door frame which is not supposed to so I have taken my templates I put them into my uh, computer scanned them in and made digital copies so that I can make holes in the houses for the doors and windows which are one millimeter less than the frames of the windows and doors and also I don't have to make a billion uh, windows by hand and I can make big windows for the shops in my scanning cut but this is how it works this is if you want to reproduce it the measurements you'll need for the houses the roof is just a rectangle and I have measured it to be needed at six centimeters wide and to score it at three centimeters now the length of the roof needs to be eight millimeters more than the length of the house side which is the side D on this drawing to make it um, more than one story you add it on like this I do uh, encourage you to make a paper template first to try this out but since the dies are universal this should work for you as well I do prefer to make my templates on uh, squared paper I found it easier to work with and uh, I'm not saying that it will be the same for everyone but I think you should try it out at least. I did not put the measurements for the flaps on the uh, on the picture here. I use half a centimeter I find it's enough but it does depend on what is next to um, your, um, your flap. For instance you're gonna see me do one building where I actually have a big window right next to the flap so I have to cut a piece of it off so that I don't cover up the window but you'll see that in a second I like to pre-score everything when I do it on the scan and cut these I actually didn't do score lines on since I didn't want holes in the paper where the light could seep out my, my village is gonna be lit from underneath um, I'm still figuring out the technical parts of that because I really want flickering lights but I don't want to have a switch for every single house by using a tea light so I am trying to educate myself on uh, and here you see the window and the flap problem I talked about before um, but I'm trying to educate myself on the electricals but I want to be sure that I don't start a fire in my house so when you work with paper and electricity I want to make absolutely sure that I don't have anything that uh, will catch on fire now you see here I'm just getting off screen for a second to uh, start another cut run for my scanning cut I'm gonna cut all the windows and doors on it if possible um, I found out that actually the quality of the paper does have a lot to say on the uh, <coughs> on whether or not it can cut intricate small things since uh, like all the paint windows Oh, look at it go. I love this thing. Um, all the paint windows uh, were troublesome in the black paper and also a bit on the white, so I made extras. Um, I couldn't make it uh, cut the small windows with paints, but I did manage to make the storefront windows with paints in the black cardstock. But here you see my first run with the machine um, and what came out of it. And like you see, I'm missing all of the paint black windows that I need. Or you don't see because I haven't told you that I need those yet but one of the houses is gonna have black paint windows I'm just checking here with the original to see that they actually have the same size I have made this file myself and I want to make completely sure that it is interchangeable with the dies if I need to hand cut some of the elements like I will need to I know that now here's my second run with the black 
windows. And it just... It just didn't work. It was crooked and everything, so I decided I have to make them by hand. I didn't want to, but I'm gonna have to. I know the positive thing about doing the holes on the scanning cut is that they're actually straight. I had a quite a few dies slip when I was doing it manually. And also the paper was not that happy about being squashed like 10 times to make windows. I think that's also why they warped over time uh, the sides of the houses. Maybe. I was super happy that the, the shop windows made it with the paints because they're gonna look fabulous. Uh, on uh, one of my uh, old school houses. It's inspired by some of the buildings in my hometown, uh, which is about, uh, I think, Middle Ages or something. It's a specific style uh, of houses that I grew up with that I just find them cute in some way. But I'm making the black paint, small paint windows uh, by hand. And I've forgotten how much of a pain in the buttocks this uh, die is. Because uh, there's only one hole to get the die out and it's always very much stuck. So I risk ripping the window when I have to take it out. But I persevered and I made it. So now for the architecture of these old houses. You see one here, a small one, but I wanted a big one. Uh, with a story in it. It's like this is gonna be the merchant of the town who had a lot of money, he could build a big house for himself and his shop and his family. That's why it's two stories, because upstairs the family will be living, you know. I'm telling myself a story while I'm doing all of this, just so you know. <laughs> and none of this architecture is exactly the way it should be. It's done from memory. I know that the they had a tendency to paint out the wood in these houses in black and you can find them in red, in yellow and in white uh, rarely in other colors than that uh, if they're time typical but some uh, in some places there would be beams that go across I think for stability of the house and it's just it's iconic to me Moving on, I'm using the color glue to glue on a piece of uh, vellum. The glue, I hope, will give the building strength because there are a lot of holes in it um, that are not going to be stabilized other than the vellum. And the vellum, of course, is to diffuse the light. I did think about putting acetate first and then vellum to make it look like glass, but uh, for this tiny project, I thought like it was going to be too much uh, to do. It would look weird. I'm still wondering if I was wrong. So, uh, I'm just gonna coat all the sides, uh, except of course the one side that doesn't have any windows. I made most of the end pieces of the houses blank, because then I can actually put them together in a row if I wanted. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. If I wanna put them together, I have to adjust the roofs, but that's not the biggest pain in the world. So assembly line style, I'm going to make all these houses with the vellum and then I'm going to glue on all the frames for the windows and the doors. I guess I don't have much else to say, I've babbled along for quite a while now, so I'm just going to leave you with some music, I hope that's okay.
We're getting to the roofs, yay! Um, you may not have understood exactly what I meant with the measurements I put on screen and uh, what I said about the roofs, but here uh, you can see me do it. Like I said, it's uh, a rectangle. It's eight millimeters longer than the facade of the building, and then it's six meters wide uh, to accommodate the house. All the houses have the same width, and of course you can change that up. Uh, that doesn't affect the size of the windows and the doors. That's all up to you. To attach the roof and to attach the houses to the ground when I get to that part, that will not be in this video. This is just the construction of the houses. But to attach it, I'm using this hinge method um, where I make hinges for just about everything. Um, I'm not going to attach them to the bottom of the houses yet. I will do that at a later time. But here I'm just gluing on the hinges. It was easier for me to make them separately than to uh, make them in my scan and cut since I didn't want to make holes in the paper at all um, to mark the score lines which I normally use uh, so that's why I'm making the hinges by hand and it wasn't actually that much trouble once I got it going
Now, like I said, this is the first part of this project, but I'm not going to be able to finish it before Christmas. I want to decorate all these stores with little signs and details, and I just don't have the time for it at the moment, or uh, the physical strength, actually. I'm very tired uh, because of all the pain I'm in. But I hope you enjoyed it, and here are a few examples of um, houses I have made where I put them on bases so that I could put a tea light inside. If you want to make one of these, um, I would suggest you go watch my um, Danish church video where I actually also make a platform to hide the tea lights inside. But until next week, I hope you'll be having a good day, evening or night.